What if I told you that using a single sentence could completely change how you work, create, and even build wealth? Welcome to the world of prompt engineering, a skill that's reshaping the way you interact with AI and opening up so many new possibilities and opportunities we couldn't have imagined. And here's the best part, you don't even need any technical skills to completely understand it and be able to use it day to day. So what is prompt engineering and what we're gonna be running through today? Well, as you can see on screen here, we've got a few different elements that so we're gonna go through what is prompt engineering? What does it mean at a high level? How do we actually use it? We're going to be going into actually the different types of prompts that you'll be able to see. There's many, many more than this, but these are just a few that we're going to run through today. And we're also going to give some demos around how you can use them in the real world. So what do they tie to? How do you use them to generate content? But also what's the future of prompt engineering? With many changes in the world that are happening today, we're seeing the rise of AI agents. Again, 2024 has been the age of LLMs, they say. 2025 is going to be the age of AI agents, the rise of AI agents. So be really interested to see how this adjusts in the future. So let's jump straight into what is prompt engineering. As you can see on screen here, there's a few different elements. So the prompt engineering at its basic level is the art of communicating with AI to get exactly what you need from it. And there's a really great clip in the Aladdin film from 2019. Guy Ritchie did that film, director, absolutely great, fantastic, one of my favorites. And there's a scene towards the start where the genie and Aladdin have escaped and Aladdin wants to be able to marry the princess so he's asking to be turned into a prince and he says to the genie make me a prince which really highlights there's so many grey areas in make me a prince we want to be really clear and concise on what we want the AI to specifically do now one key principle that we got to remember that ties in with this is that garbage in equals garbage out so the better the input that you put into this the better the output you're going to get from the AI so it's really fundamental and this is why it's so key to understand prompt engineering and how to use it effectively because it can massively improve the outputs that you're getting from the AI that you're working with. And this works across Claude, Gemini, OpenAI, ChatGPT, whichever one you're using, your own one, using stuff like this is great. And again, you're able to build your own one in places like OpenAI's Playground because what it enables you to do is actually set it up fundamentally and then reuse it day to day versus having to always use the same prompt every single time. So let's move on to the next stage, which is what are some of the prompts that we can use? Well, the first option is probably one that you're going to be using already, which is around zero shot prompting. This is the simplest form of interacting with AI and essentially you're giving it a task or asking it a question without any additional context or examples. This is probably similar to the way that you engage with platforms like Google, asking a question and sending off the response. It's really great for quick answers, trying to get some of the outputs from the AI. But what you've also got to be careful of is it would be great for some of the more complex or nuanced structures that require a bit more guidance on how to actually generate the best output. So what does this mean in reality? Well, it probably looks something like one of the prompts that are about to pop in. So we're going to be using ChatGPT today. So if we come in, a zero shot prompt looks something like this. Write a tagline for a coffee shop. So as you can see there, it's come out with brewing comfort one cup at a time. So again, all we've asked it to do is come up with a tagline for a coffee shop. We've not given it any examples or any further context. So that's where we're going to move on to the next one here, which is is option two which is around one shot prompting what we're looking to do here is to provide one single example of the output that you're looking for think of it as showing the ai how to solve a problem and you're teaching it the style the tone the formatting of the output and how you would like it to do Again, really great for some of the lower complexity tasks and we'll go through and do an example. So what we're going to be doing in this one is just around asking it the capital of a country. So as you can see here, we've given it an example at the start, which is what is the capital of France? We've given it a formatted output here. So we're saying the answer should be the capital of Paris. Now, if we ask the question, what is the capital of Germany? Is Berlin. And it should do it in the exact same format as we've got here. So there we go. We can see it's worked exactly the way that we want it. So that's one shot prompting. Now to take that to the next, Next level again, what we've got is something called few shot prompting. So if I just remove this, what we can see here is we're giving it a few examples. And this is again more context, more information the AI is able to lean on. So it knows how to output exactly what you want. This is really great for generating lists, mimicking specific writing styles, solving more complex tasks. So this is where you could use it with platforms such as OpenAI's ChatGPT01, or you've got O3 that they've just released as well. This means that you're able to get the output that you're really looking for. And Elements like the O1 and the O3, what they're able to do is actually really critically think about the problem and the output that you're looking for, and then do even more investigation, even more thought reasoning before giving you the output as well. So let's give that a try and see how it works. So again, coming back to the example that we were just doing, we'll do another one around the capitals. So as we can see here, the capital of Spain is Madrid, exactly the same as the two examples that we've got. So that's great. What it's understood is how we want the output to come through. So that's absolutely perfect. What we also want to be able to do is maybe 
maybe use this in a more copywriting sense. So if you're going to be uploading some of the material that you and your company have generated or something that you as maybe an individual that's that's putting content out there, what you'll be able to do is train it on your speaking language style, your tone, your formatting, how you actually like to engage the wording. It can analyze so much to understand how you're sending out and what the content is you're generating and it'd be able to replicate it for you. So let's go through and do one that's an Apple example. So I'll paste that in there. So what we're saying is write market copy in the style of Apple, minimalist, focus on innovation and emotionally inspiring. But this is again where we've got the few shots in here. So we've got example one, example two, and we've got one around the iPad. So this is some of the examples that you can use. And then at the bottom here, we're asking it to write brand new copy using this information, using the examples that we've already generated, that we've already got around a new smartwatch, advanced health tracking and minimalist design. Now, if we send this off, we should get a much better polished output versus just doing what we saw at the start, which was just giving it the task. So as we can see here, meet the future of wellness, our smartwatch redefines simplicity and power, advanced health tracking. So it's actually gone through and replicated the style of apple but you can do this for so many different ways say if you've got a famous personality that you want to copy you'll be able to do that or if you've got a favorite brand that you want to replicate you'll be able to do that as well brilliant so that's the example prompting or the, the few shot and the one shot prompting now there's another way that you could do that as well and if we get rid of that it's the role-based prompting so almost think of this as like an actor we're giving the ai a specific persona a role that we want it to adapt to and this is by framing it as an expert a character a professional and we're telling it to use that tone and focus for the response so this is great where as you can see here situational tasks where you need to act like someone with expertise on a specific market maybe generating a business case doing some insights into specific industries and that's where we're going to do the exact same thing using apple as the example so if we come in here we'll paste the prompt and you can see right at the start here we've given it that specific role so we're saying you are a senior marketing copywriter for apple and then we've given it the task so your task is to write an inspiring and minimalist product description so again that's got more information and context for it to use and then we're going to say at the end here use apple signature style so again what we've said is be this person be this role this is your task and reinforcing at the end what we want them to do so as you can see there again generated in the tone of apple an example output of in this case around high fidelity wireless earbuds so again more your apple airpods pro or maybe the airpods max and it's been able to do that seamlessly and quickly now if we want to take that a step further how do i write my prompts so if we come down to the bottom here i almost like to structure mine like maybe a greek temple as you can see on the left hand side there we've got the top part which is your goal or objective that you're going to be doing you've got the context that sits within that you've given it a specific role so you want them to be a copywriter you want them to be a marketeer you said the tone maybe you want it to be professional you want it to be engaging you want it to be for linkedin you can say stuff like that and then the formatting so how do we want that output to come through do we want it to be json do we want it to have any specific parts in there do we want it to be broken down with emojis maybe so you can really make it clear to the ai what you want it to do now at the end we also have examples so we want to bring this all together with maybe between five and twenty examples there's differing research on that for the actual efficiency of this i'm sure as the ai gets smarter you maybe won't need to include them as much but what we find is including that it makes the app a really great for getting exactly what you want first time so that you can use that straight away versus having to adjust it maybe a few times it's all ready to go nice and easy now there's two additional points to include in here as well we want to use markdown formatting and we'll touch on that in a second because that's how the ai has been trained and it really helps structure our prompts the other part and the optional is after the examples, you can actually add an element maybe called critical information. And what this will do is it will include all of the key points that you want it to do. So, for example, if you only want it as a JSON output or you want it to be just the actual blog post itself, you don't want any additional information, you can reiterate the really critical parts of the end. Because what we find with the AI is it's really great at identifying the start. It gets a little muddled in the middle or forgets what's in the middle and then it does really great at the end as well now i'm sure the ai wouldn't constantly improve and this will mitigate over the future but for now if you really reiterate the critical parts at the end we find it performs much better so let's give that a try so we'll come back into chat gpt we'll paste our prompt in here so again we've used markdown formatting and we've said the goal create marketing copy in apple signature style to promote innovative products with an emphasis on simplicity elegance and emotional connection We've then given it some context so it knows what it is, where it's working. We've given it that specific role again so it knows exactly what it needs to do. 
We've highlighted the tone, so how we want the output to come through. We've said the formatting, so how we want it to come through. In this case, we want a headline, then a short paragraph. We're avoiding technical jargon, so maybe technical specific terms is what it means there. And then we've come and give it a few examples. So we've got example one, example two, example three, example four, and then example five. So now if we send that off, what it should do is give us a really nice great output in that exact style. So as you can see here, we've got product descriptions, Apple signature style, we've got the headline we've got the description so if you wanted to go through and say a new product we could do that so we could do now please come up with a new product which is an offering for the iPad. So it's going to use that last information and it's going to go and generate it for us. So as you can see here, this is the context window and that's where you start to get into elements where the longer, sometimes the better, but the longer sometimes the worse as well because you're adding fluff in there that maybe doesn't need to be. Now, at the time of recording this, I've used artificialanalysis.ai. It's a fantastic website for getting the latest and greatest on how the AIs are performing. What you'll be able to do is come down to the section where they've got content window and you can see who's enabling you to actually embed more information in that prompt versus the other so the time of recording this we can see that google's gemini 2.0 enables you to have 2 million tokens within a prompt or within a conversation and remembering that around 100 tokens is around 75 words so as you can see here we then decrease with amazon aws we've then got Claude, and then we've got OpenAI a bit further down here you've got your, your llama from meta as well in there so again it can be really good to have a long context length for that conversation but also maybe you don't need it if you're doing some more day-to-day -day low complexity task. now this is great this is how i structure my prompts now if we zoom back out again we've covered what is prompt engineering some different types of prompting and how they work we've given it some real life applications you know examples how it works but what's the future of prompt engineering what do we mean by ai agents and would we even need to prompt well if we come to the right hand side here, what we'll be able to see is a few conversations with Anthropic CEO, Perplexity CEO, OpenAI CEO, and you, there's many, many more interviews out there. And what they're all coming to the consensus of is can we actually get the AI to understand what you want to do straight away? Like your O1, O3s, it's got the deep reasoning that sits behind it. It can think through the problems and give you a better output so that maybe you don't need to have the prompt sit at the start as well. What we're also starting to see is the next generation of AI tools starting to come through. And that's what we're we're seeing as the future of AI agents or the agent world as you may have heard it and what this is is AI that's able to go off and complete a specific task that you've given it so for example book your holiday it would go off find all of the information make the booking for you and just let you know when the process is complete or again if you think more towards the business day-to-day -day, maybe it's actually generating reports for you it's actually going through and updating maybe your copywriting and distributing it for you in your tone and structure that you've already given it so you're able to do stuff like that automatically what they're also talking about is how having almost a master and overlaying AI agent that sits on top of them, make sure they're improving, completing the objectives correctly, constantly improving how they perform so that you don't need to worry about it day to day. And if you don't believe me, well, you can take the word of reports like Gartner. And as we can see in their 2024 Emerging Tech Impact Radar, we can see this graph here. And this is really interesting because what we can see is the dark gray on the outside is that it's around six to eight years away. The lighter gray is around three to six years. The lightest gray is one to three years out. And then the yellow is around now or within the next year or so. And what we can see in the bottom left-hand corner here is generative AI is here and being used now. With the Gen AI enabled virtual assistants, it's almost here. It's right on the cusp. Now you can also see intelligent applications and many others. And what we can see is this technology is almost here. It's knocking on the door. It's about to enter the world. And that's where we're seeing in 2025, the rise of AI agents. Now, a talk that I really recommend you just have a listen to. Again, there's many out there by Google as well have done some. There's one from Satya Nadella from 2024 in London, does a keynote talk around their AI agents that they're building. And what this can start to show you is how the world of AI is going to transform. And it will be able to help empower your business to new heights because it'll enable you to focus on the bigger picture and how you run the business versus the day-to-day -day, more the mundane or the automated tasks that take up your time that actually you don't need to do. That's been a really quick video on prompt engineering. I hope it was useful. Have a great day.